In this week's episode of Living with an E36 M3, proudly sponsored by BOTB, where you can win your dream car for the price of a pint, I will be answering the one question that I get asked a lot. Even more than, Alex, how tall are you really? It's about 6'4", by the way. Anyway, that question is, why did I buy the E36 M3 over the superior E46 M3? Here are five reasons. Now, the number one reason why I bought the E36 M3 over the similarly priced and arguably better E46 M3 is simple. It is personal preference. I love the look of this car. I like the boxy dimensions. I love the 90s styling. I love the wing mirrors. I love the interior. Now, a lot of you guys probably walk around wearing black socks. Me, on the other hand, I like wearing pink, green, and orange socks. This is my opinion, this is what I like to do. I like the E36 M3 over the E46 M3, even though I know that the newer car is so much better. But you gotta do what makes you happy. Now the next reason for my E36 M3 choice is the noise. Now the E46 M3 sounds very distinctive, it sounds very metallic, very raspy. It's a bit like someone who's been smoking and who's in desperate need of a cigarette, you know, they're a bit like <laughs> Anyway, the E36 from the uh, factory sounds pretty, pretty muted, but with a Super Sprint exhaust like the one that I've bought recently, it is a racing Super Sprint. It sounds absolutely magnificent, as you're about to hear. <laughs> The S50 B32 engine you will find underneath the bonnet of Colin My E36 M3 Evo 2 was the first street legal BMW to produce 100 horsepower per litre. From 3.2 litres, it produced, you guessed it, 321 horsepower, which even by today's standards is pretty damn awesome. Now, unfortunately, you guys in the uh, US of A had to make do with 240 horsepower. Yeah. 240 horsepower for your E36 M3. And that was because the E30 M3 and also the E34 M5 sold really, really badly. So BMW didn't really care for you folk. But you petitioned and BMW heard your petition and they produced the E36 M3. You didn't get individual throttle bodies and you got an engine that was, uh, yeah, pretty naff by uh, European standards. So uh, kind of sucked to be you. Owning an E36 M3 uh, isn't all sweetness and light. Uh, you will have seen in a previous episode the, uh, the window kind of disappeared and shut itself, which I fixed. Now let's have a quick walk around and see what's happened today. So I've noticed that the, uh, the indicator has kind of come out. That's just a bit of sticky. There's a bit of rust here, a little rust spot that I've noticed. So that needs addressing. Gas struts on the boot still need doing. Oh yeah, the, uh, the door card earlier on today kind of fell off, so I had to uh, I had to uh, push it back on. I'm not going to pull it back off. But there's, uh, there's always something to do. Work in progress, but from a distance, keep going. From a distance, all is well. Oh yeah, and um, I need a bit of sticky here as well. Duct tape doesn't cut it. The E36 M3 came in three body styles. We've got the coupe like Colin, we had the cabriolet, and we also had the saloon version. Now BMW screwed up big time, okay? Because it didn't make the one car that I really, really wanted, the E36 M3 Touring, which would have looked absolutely awesome. This is it. This is an unofficial E36 M3 Touring, and it belongs to my new best friend, a guy called Steven. Ethan, you're fired, okay? Now, what goes into transforming what was a 328i Touring SE, it also used to be green, into something this awesome? I'm gonna tell you, but first, let's have a drum roll. Lovely, thank you very much. 
We have got the S50 B32 engine with ARP rod bolts, Evo gearbox, Evo differential and subframe, Evo front and rear brakes, Evo suspension with Bilstein dampers, Cabriolet cross brace, AC Schnitzer anti-roll bars, AC Schnitzer exhaust, AC Schnitzer short shift kit. We've got the Vadar interior. We've got the M3 wing mirrors and wheels. Everything screams M3. It is effectively an M3 touring E36, which makes it M3-licious. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were to kind of lean, which way am I gravitating to? Kind of that way. Shall we, shall we carry on with the video? I'm just gonna go back to my car. Cool. Awesome. It's just, um, <coughs> this way. Nice. Awesome. Oh, it's a bit of weight reduction. I, I don't even know why I'm getting in this side. I'm uh, just gonna walk around. If you can probably cut now, you can probably, probably cut now. Heath, what are you doing? Should do some glide track or something. I'm gonna get in my car, okay? I'm gonna. I'm doing it. Now these cars are very, very rare to see, and when you see another one on the road, it is a joy. You give them a wave, you stop, you have a chat. You don't do that with E46s, and let me tell you why. In 1999, these cars peaked at 1.7 thousand. So 1.7 thousand of these were on the roads in 1999 in the UK. Today, only 421 remain on the road, with 400 declared off the road. So somewhere 400 are lying around in fields, being abandoned, not being loved, not being enjoyed. Also, when you go online and you look to buy one of these cars, you will find 250 E46 M3s online nationwide right now for sale, compared to 16. 16 E36 M3s are currently for sale nationwide. That makes these things extremely rare, and what's more, rare cars mean investment. These are an investment, prices are going up. But that is not to say that my E36 is a garage queen. Far from it. I use this as a daily, we've got it in loads of videos. I look after it though, but I do not keep it in a dehumidified area where no one can touch it. This can be touched, it can be fisted. I don't hold out a lot of hope, I'm gonna be honest. And I'm gonna go with it, I'm gonna go with gusto. Ready? Ow. Ow, that's a definite fail. All right. <sighs> fail the fist test, that was the most violent fist test failure I have, hopefully will ever have. So those are my five reasons why I bought the E36 M3 over the better, probably more reliable E46 M3. Yeah, stuff breaks on this car quite a lot. It is definitely a pain in the ass to live with. Probably should have just bought the E46, but I didn't. I'm stuck now. Hey ho. Hey guys, Christian from BOTB here. And just to remind you that at the end of every Living With An E36 episode, we are giving away 150 pounds worth of free tickets for you to try and win your dream car at BOTB.com. This week's winner is Dean Burin. Congratulations, Dean. The credit is in your account right now. For your chance to win your dream car then, just like these lucky winners over here on our wall, sign up at BOTB.com today. Plus follow the instructions in the video description below and you will be entered into the draw to win £150 worth of credit, just like Dean. I'm gonna give you a fun fact about the TBR Sigaris. You see these funky fins, these used to be vent holes in order to allow air displacement from the tires and to get heat away from the brakes, but the problem is, stones were being picked up by the tyres, they were shooting out of here and smashing the windscreens on the prototype cars. So they had to keep the design of the bonnet as they were, but fill the vents, which is a bit of a shame, but still looks cool.